do not back under the pup trailer. First, engage parking brakes, exit the cab, and visually check that the pup trailer will contact the center of the fifth wheel. If there is a gap between the pup trailer upper coupler plate and the fifth wheel top plate, this may lead to a high couple. Raise or lower the landing gear to ensure the upper coupler plate of the pup trailer will contact the center of the fifth wheel top plate. Return to the cab and back slowly under the pup trailer. Stop when you hear the fifth wheel lock jaws closing around the kingpin. Important, the Holland ELITE fifth wheel is only intended to be a driver coupling assistant. The ELITE does not eliminate the need to exit the tractor cab and perform a visual inspection to confirm a successful coupling. The driver must follow the visual inspection procedures outlined in this video. Again, exit the cab. Do not hook up the air or electrical lines to the pup trailer yet, as you must first perform a pull test on the fifth wheel coupling. Next, raise the landing gear pads until they are just off the ground. Return to the cab and perform a pull test to ensure the coupling is secure. If the pull test is successful, you must then perform a thorough visual inspection of the fifth wheel couple. First check that the yoke shaft of the FW35 is fully retracted. The nut and washer should be snug against the skirt of the top plate. Next check that the pull handle is fully retracted and in the closed position. Check to make sure there is no gap between the fifth wheel top plate and the trailer upper coupler plate. Now look under the trailer and into the fifth wheel throat area. If the coupling was successful, the lock jaws will be illuminated by white LED lights. Ensure that the lock jaws are fully closed around the kingpin. If at any point during the coupling process, the red LED lights on the sides of the fifth wheel begin flashing, there may be a problem with the couple. Note, do not proceed if the red LED lights are flashing. It is recommended that you inspect the coupling to determine the problem, address the issue, and reattempt the coupling procedure. To verify a successful coupling, all of the following must be present. The yoke shaft must be completely retracted. The pull handle must be completely retracted. There is no gap between the fifth wheel and the trailer. The white LED lights must be illuminated in the throat area. The lock jaws must be closed around the kingpin. Once all of these criteria have been met, you can proceed to raise the landing gear, knowing that your fifth wheel couple is safe and secure. Connect the air and electrical lines from the dolly to the pup trailer. Holland FW35 with ELITE, a visual coupling assistant designed to help drivers get it right. All right, that was that video. For a lot of you guys, it's uh, pretty, you guys, it's very familiar to you guys because we've, we've shown it before. Uh, sometime uh, last year, but FedEx always wants us to discuss um, this process just because of the devastating effects that it could have if you have a disconnect, um, if you don't hook up everything properly or you have rollaways. Um, it's, it's one of the most dangerous incidents that occur um, across the network or, or even across this industry, really. Um, this proper hooking up and even using, you know, all the way down to the pedal hook itself and making sure chains are hooked up, making sure, you know, the connections are done properly. So once you pull out of the yard, that's just something else you don't have to worry about in terms of an accident. Um, but a lot of times, especially in a, in a time of year we're having right now where it's extremely busy and everyone seems to be um, in a rush, those are the things that tend to get forgotten about. But we just want to remind everyone to, you know, be focused, be vigilant on that. Um, and how you start your day and how you start your run is just as important as you finishing it. Um, so always keep that in mind. 
Uh, do we have a couple other topics uh, Dave is going to jump into? Um, and then if you will we'll take some questions and, and, and uh, interaction that way as well. Dave, you want to start with the pedal hook? We kind of lead into that. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, good morning and uh, or afternoon. I'm trying to think you guys on the East Coast. Um, I want to reemphasize what Eric just said, and that is rushing and taking shortcuts. Um, they can have a devastating and sometimes fatal effect. Um, you really need to pay attention to what you're doing in those, those, those little things that make a big difference in terms of safety and, and living okay um having said that one of the things that is an issue with disconnects is the dolly in the yard uh it is important that you not only check your pedal hook but also put chains on in the yard and i will give you uh, an example we have a video uh in our terminal of a dolly that came loose and flew through or run as a driver went around the corner it came loose and went through the fuel island fortunately there was nobody in it and fortunately there was there was nobody on the other end but it went through the fuel island and into the hillside now you can only imagine if there had been a truck there or there was a, a truck coming the other side and it could have hit something uh, i have an experience personally but um, uh, we have a contractor some years ago, I would say probably 12 years ago, who is uh, who was run over by one of those dollies. Not only not only is he disabled and couldn't drive, but he's he's got a disability that is being paid for for the rest of his life, as long as his working life, because because of that. Um, I don't think you want to be in disability or have anyone else become disabled for the rest of their lives because you forgot to do one little silly thing which is a simple thing rather that is to make sure that your your chains are on. that's why they're there that's why FedEx requires it uh and i want to talk about the pedal hook a little bit more too um most of the pedal hooks on the newer trailers that FedEx has are what's called a uh a, a positive position when closed meaning that when it's closed it's in an upright position and the the uh the tongue of the the trailer before or the dolly is will always push up on that on the position of the the closing part so that it will always block it from coming off pedal hooks on the back of the truck however are the opposite they fold they fold down in, in the closing position and therefore the dolly when it's bouncing around can push it open so it's very 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 important that you put the the, the carter pin into the the head of the dolly to make sure that it was that does not come off okay those two things are very important put the put the safe pin in the pedal hook and make sure that the um the chains are on as you drive through the yard on the back of the truck. That also means that the trailer's chains need to be on. Disconnect is a, is a, is a big issue with company because we've had a few of those. Uh, I think I told you guys maybe a month or so ago, we had here in uh, our area a trailer that became that, that disconnected because it was a, uh, a, a driver who was in a hurry and was doing a short little run uh, to the station and didn't check really well. The rear trailer came off and was uh, a off-duty police officer ran into the back of it and was killed. That was that made the news and not only did FedEx have to deal with that because the reputation of the company is uh, our name is on the trailers. Not only do they have to deal with that, but the police department is somebody who is uh, their first responders. We want them to be to stay safe. And uh, this one lost his life, not even on duty. It's bad enough that they have to be on duty then. So little things that you think maybe I can let it go or I'm thinking about something else while I'm doing it. 
or I'm worrying about how long it's going to take me to get to the next spot, or I'm worrying about something that's happening at home, forget all of that. You need to concentrate on what you're doing. Make sure all your connections are good. Make sure that you are constantly doing what needs to be done. And I double and sometimes triple check that I've done it right. Go back over it again and again because uh, there's been times when I have caught myself having not done what I should have done. So I since then I have I have gone to the point of double checking and triple checking, and I will have my tow driver if they're not in the sleeper check again. It's no big deal, but it can save a life. Okay. The other things you need to be be concerned about is making sure that you do your pre trip and your post trip. Um, we have here in California. Uh, uh, I guess you got them, got them everywhere. Garbage trucks that have the arm and it comes down and swings over and picks up the can and dumps it. There is a driver now who last year was sentenced to 15 years in prison. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison because he did not check, he did not do his pre-trip and he was at a hydraulic leak that he didn't look for. And while he was driving down the road, the hydraulic the hydraulic leak became a flood and the arm of the garbage truck came down and out and went through a school bus and killed four or five students that were in the school bus, all because he didn't do his pre-trip. Now that's an extreme, I get that. But pre-trips are important for that reason. But also, Pre-trips, when you're looking for your lights, making sure all your lights are working, pull you over for anything. Because right now, they're looking for anything at all. We are, our, our rating is high enough, our PSA rating is high enough, they're going to pull us in for anything and everything. So, checking, uh, make sure that your lights are working, that everything is 100%, saves you time, because now you don't have to deal with an inspection. And it saves you from having to go through all of the, the apparatus that an inspection involves. So, it also can save you from having an accident on out there on the road. If you, have, you do your pre-trip and your post-trip, and I'm going to emphasize post-trip is just as important. We only have a few days, a couple of days to get vehicles repaired. Not long at all. And post-trip, if you can notify your service provider that, hey, there's a problem here, while you're off duty, maybe it could be done in time. Otherwise, maybe there's a rental involved and that's an expense. Maybe there's a, um, uh, there's no rentals available so, so that the, the time and the effort is all lost because a post-trip wasn't done. Or somebody else hooks up with that truck or trailer and now they've got to they've got to take the time to have it repaired because you didn't do the post trip. There are lots of reasons for doing pre and post trip. Uh, post trip is just as important as pre trip because things happen on the road. Um, I asked my drivers to do actually to do an inspection on the tractor and the trailers every time they stop for anything when they take their breaks. Especially if you've gone through uh, through a fuel and not fuel island, and you've been away from the truck, and the co-driver's in a sleeper, uh, I have known people to pull the fifth pin or pull the uh, pin on the fifth on the fifth wheel, just and for trailers. So it's always good to just go around and check again. Make sure you don't have a leak. Make sure you have all your tires good. Make sure the the lights are working. Just walk around really quick. Now there's you're required every day at least once to do a visual inspection. But it's even better to do it every time you get out of the truck. Things happen. You can have a flat and not be, not even realize it until you actually do that inspection. One of the other things that is that can be an issue is your landing gear. Always make sure that your landing gear is up. And if I don't think you, uh, maybe you noticed in, in the, the video 
that the landing gear is supposed to be set so that when you pull up underneath the tractor with either the dolly or the uh, pull underneath the trailer with either the dolly or the tractor, that you lift up the trailer so that the landing gear is not touching the ground. That's so it doesn't become damaged. Damaged landing gear, you can touch that. Uh, I've seen them bent because, because of that. I've also seen that the tractor can miss the kingpin and wind up damaging the back of the tractor against the trailer. I have a driver who has just done that uh, two months ago, a 15 year veteran because he just, for one little reason, didn't think long enough or take his time to do what needed to be done. And he backed underneath a trailer that was too high and damaged the tractor, causing me about $2,500 in damage. Okay, so those are things that need to be watched out for, but we don't want to damage the trailers by damaging the landing gear because that means that the landing gear can't come up, it'll catch on something else, and the other thing we need to also do besides the landing gear is make sure that that handle is secure on the side. Don't have it sticking out because someone will, can, it can as, as you're driving along, somebody can come along and just like the garbage truck uh, arm can be there, somebody can come along and hit the side of that handle and now you've got damage to the tractor or to the, to their car and that's all time. It is easier and better in all cases to take your time and do a thorough, thorough job on all of your couplings and everything else. You can also be a defensive driver, but also while you're being defensive, check things out. Make sure that everything's working. Um, are there any questions about that? Okay, one of the other things that I've been asked to talk about is um, personal conveyance. There's uh, there's a requirement for what is what is required for when you can use personal conveyance. I've boiled it down as far as I'm concerned to my company, and and that is you you can use personal conveyance until you get your hook slip. We have parking off of the of our campus here in, in LA. And uh, so it takes about 20 minutes to get from the parking lot to, to the terminal. Sometimes you have to wait for trailers. So when the drivers pull in, they're, while they're moving from the, from the parking facility to, the company, to, to FedEx's facility, they're on personal conveyance. They don't start their time until they get a hook slip. Once you get a hook slip, you are now on duty. And pull tra pull pulling trailers or search for trailers, that's a yard, yard uh, facility, you're on duty. But no more personal conveyance while you're running around doing, uh, looking for your trailers. Personal conveyance also can be used when you are free from duty. When you, um, let's say you go to a terminal and there, your hook slip is not ready and you're going to go get something to eat. You can use personal conveyance to drive around and find some place to eat or go to the store or do anything that is that is for your convenience that has nothing to do with your work. Simple as that. I have a question with personal convenience. Um, what is the maximum allotted time to use personal convenience? There is no, there is no time. You're, let's say, let's say you go and they tell you um, your trailers are not going to be ready for four, four hours or six hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to go somewhere and get something to eat, or you want to do something, um, or go shopping or whatever. You can go on personal convenience for that for, for those four hours. Oh, okay. Let's say, let's say you are, let's say you want to take the train. For those four hours, you want to go home. You use personal convenience to go home. And then also drive back to the terminal. That's all personal convenience. Personal convenience can be used whenever you are not on duty working or not attached to a trailer. 
you're looking for trailers or you're hooked to trailers, you are not on personal conveyance. Simple as that. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, stay, stay safe, stay healthy. Oh, I would like to go over the updates really quick for the company. Sure, go for it. Okay, so we're still cleaning every single trailer. I mean, every single tractor as we have been doing. Uh, everything is completely clean. But um, on the websites and in stores, we're having a little bit of a difficult time trying to find uh, hand sanitizer, more Lysol, and uh, disinfecting wipes. So please try to, you know, use them as you need to use them, but ration them out a little bit. Um, along with that, patience is very critical in line haul so that we get the runs uh, in a timely manner. Along with that, please remember to use your seatbelt always, even when doing the coupling process and never cover the camera. And the weather's also changing very rapidly over here, especially in Florida. So please adjust your speed to the conditions. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Well, one more thing, um, Dave, is it possible you could talk about the, the importance of using the routing that FedEx gives versus GPS that might not be as uh, important or not as accurate for truck drivers? Oh yeah, I can, I can do that. I thought, I thought that was a video you were gonna show or something. Yeah, um, I've, we have a, a contractor here that um, his tractor wound up um, in New York City, in the actual New York City proper, uh, and could not get underneath a bridge because he was using GPS. And the reason was that it was not, GPS is not set up for trucks. It's set up for vehicles. And so he had to have two tow trucks pull, they had to disconnect the trailer, uh, train one trailer, pull it out of the facade, out from underneath the bridge, pull the dolly from out, pull the second one out, and so he could turn around. And it, it was about a four hour operation <laughs> because he was following GPS and not following the routing. Trucks, uh, unless you have GPS, GPS routing for trucks, which don't, uh, which don't account for low, low uh, overhead bridges. And even in that case, um, there's, there, especially during the summer when, when they, uh, they're resurfacing, resurfacing can change from the, from the, from the ground to the bottom of the bridge or to the, uh, uh, to the river as much as uh, as much as uh, four inches and that may make the difference as to whether you can get underneath it or not all the routes that fedex has for you is the best and easiest way gps is not something to follow uh, uh, on your own any questions in regards to that i know we had a I know somebody had an incident recently where they almost hit a bridge based off following, um, you know, maybe GPS data that wasn't um, compatible with trucks. Right, and, 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 there's, and there's one more thing. Uh, some of these bridges have weight limits, and we, uh, and it's weight limits, depending on the length of the trailers and all this, there's a bunch of different different ways. They have weight limits, and they have width limits and all of that. Um, following what a car can do on GPS, you, you can get a ticket for a weight limit, even though you are uh, legally on a highway underneath the weight limit, but not necessarily for that, that bridge, um, even though there's no overhead. Any other questions? No, I think that would be all. Well, thank you, everyone. Continue to have a safe day, safe week, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank Wait, you. Eric, one, more, one more thing. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I checked with the CDC. Hydrogen peroxide also works as a disinfectant. I know I've gone to different places, and alcohol and chlorine wipes and all of that have kind of disappeared. 
but one of the things that I've done is gotten little spray bottles and gotten hydrogen peroxide, um, uh, bottles of hydrogen peroxide and have my drivers now spray down hydrogen peroxide uh, and using either towel wipes, uh, uh, paper towel wipes or shop to, to clean surface areas. Now, one of the things you have to be careful of with hydrogen peroxide is if you have material, uh, let's say there's material on your seat instead of a uh, vinyl, it will reach it. <laughs> so when you have uh, cloth material of some kind, you got to be careful of that. But any plastic surface, uh, any uh, peroxide, uh, any vinyl surface, uh, hydrogen peroxide works just as well to, to kill viruses. And like I said, uh, I found it in abundance. In fact, at Costco, they have little packs now of hydrogen peroxide that are, you're talking 32 two 32 inch, uh, 32 ounce bottles uh, very cheaply and buying little spray bottles that you can get used at a beauty salon or something like that is something you can use instead of uh, to wipe down and uh, uh, and if you, you, you can use those on your gloves, if you have gloves, you can use the hydrogen peroxide to sanitize your gloves. Copy that, good info, definitely appreciate it. All right, guys, everyone stay safe out there. Thank you. Bye.